Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we're going to learn about unpacking arguments. And this is a little bit more complicated than what we've seen so far, so please do bear with me. I'm going to define a multiply function that takes in any number of arguments. Here's how. We create the multiply function as normal and in here we're going to put star args. Now the star is the important part, the args is just a variable name that will be used to collect the arguments. So let's print the args out. And for now it's not going to multiply anything, it's just going to print them out. So what's happening here is we've defined a function and we've said that the function has a set of arguments that will be collected into a tuple of arguments when the function gets called. So if we do multiply and then we do 1, 3 and 5, notice that here I'm passing three different arguments but this only has seemingly a single parameter. So I'm passing three different arguments and what's going to happen is they are going to be collected into this args variable. So I'm going to save this and run it and you can see that what we get printed out when we run the function is a tuple of my arguments. So we've got 1, 3 and 5 printed out as a tuple. If we wanted to multiply all these numbers together, we can just iterate over the arguments. So for arg in args, we can say total equal total times arg and then return total. Then we can sort of print that out. Now what we're doing here is we're starting off with a variable which is 1 and then we're multiplying that variable by each of the arguments and then we're returning the final value. If we run that we get an error because we left the s there so let's run that again. There we go, we get 15 printed out. So this is a way of collecting multiple arguments into a single variable when you are calling a function. And this has a number of uses that you will definitely be seeing quite a lot as you program in Python. Notice that you can call this function with one argument if you want and that's totally fine as well, it just creates a tuple of a single element. Let's go into another example, let's say we have an add function with two parameters x and y and then you have a list of numbers 3 and 5. So just as we can use the asterisk to collect arguments into one parameter, we can go the other way around and we can use the asterisk to destructure arguments into multiple parameters. So you can do add star nums and what this will do is it will use three for x and 5 for y. So it is destructuring the nums variable and splitting it out into multiple values such that one value can go to one parameter. Notice that if you do just nums here you're going to pass 3 and 5, the list itself, as the value for x and y is not going to have a value so you're going to get an error. So by doing this it passes one value for each parameter. Of course you do need to have the same number of values in this list as parameters in this function. Otherwise you're going to have an error where you're going to have too many parameters or too many arguments. Let's print this out so you can check that it works. There you have it, 8 comes out. Now this can also work with named arguments. So remember you can call the add function by doing x equal 3 and y equal 5. So you can do something like that using these asterisks. Let's say that you've got your nums and these are now a dictionary with a value for x and a value for y. If you wanted to use this dictionary as the arguments to these functions, you would have to do nums x and nums y like that, which is kind of ugly and also difficult to read. You've started to get a lot of brackets and square brackets and so on. If you wanted to be even more specific, you can do x equal nums x and y equal nums y. And here is where the magic happens. You can see that the parameter name is the same as the key in the dictionary that we are using as a value for that parameter. So x is the key x and y is the key y. Instead of doing this entire thing, we can tell Python to pass in this dictionary as named arguments where the argument will be equal to the value associated with that same name for a key. 
So essentially doing exactly this, but just do star star nums. And that will do the same thing. So because we're using star star, it'll say, okay, you've got a dictionary with two keys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in each key as a named argument. And the value is going to be that associated with the key. So it'll say x equal nums x and y equal nums y. I know that's quite a complicated thing, but it simplifies your code so much when you can use dictionaries like that. Let's go back to our multiply function that we had earlier on with this collected set of arguments. And I'm going to create another function called apply. And now we're going to say star args comma operator. So this is a special bit of syntax in Python. And what it means is collect all the positional arguments into this tuple args and also have a named argument at the end. This creates a compulsory or required named argument. So when you're calling this function, you're going to pass in as many arguments as you want, and they will all be collected into args. And at the end, you must pass in a named argument for this one. So let me just give it a body there. And we're going to say if the operator is equal to the asterisk, we're going to return multiply of args. Otherwise, if the operator is equal to plus, we're going to return the sum of args. And finally, we're going to return no valid operator if it's neither of them. Now, I have a bug in this function, and you may notice what it is based on what we've seen already. But I know that you don't have a lot of practice with this yet, so it is possible to not notice it. That's fine. We're going to print apply of 1, 3, 6, and 7. And the operator is going to be plus. So this is how this function must be called. You can pass in as many arguments as you want. They will be collected by args. Finally, you must pass in a named argument for this one there. If you just pass in plus, Python's going to try to collect it with args. So you're going to miss this parameter. Uh, indeed, if we run this, you'll see that you get an error missing one required keyword only argument. So you do need the operator in there. So if we run this, it'll all work. You get 17 back because that's the addition of all of these numbers. However, if you change this to a asterisk, then you get back a tuple. So why this tuple? Why not the multiplication of all the numbers? Is there a bug in our multiply function? Well, you might be tempted to go through and see what the multiply function is doing. Multiply function starts with a variable called total that has the value of one. And then it goes through the arguments and makes total equal to total multiplied by the arg. So how on earth is it managing to end up with a tuple being returned? Well, if you multiply one by a tuple, you actually end up with that tuple. So that means that args must be a tuple of tuples such that the first argument, the first arg in the tuple is itself a tuple such that you're multiplying the tuple by one and ending up with the tuple itself and then returning that. So the best way to do this is to use a debugger, but we haven't learned how to use a debugger yet. So we're going to print the arguments and you'll see that you're going to get something a little bit weird. When you print the args, you get a tuple of tuples. And then when you iterate over the args, arg is the inner tuple. You're multiplying that by one, making it equal to total, such that total is the tuple. And then because that's the only value in args, that is the end of the for loop, and you return the tuple. The reason for that is because we did not pass in individual arguments to the multiply function, we passed in a tuple. We want to put a star here. The reason for that is because when we call the apply function, we are passing in four different arguments that are being collected into one tuple by the star. But when we call the multiply function, we want to pass in four different arguments so that they can be collected by args inside the multiply function and then used in here. But before we were passing the args tuple itself, the collected tuple in this function. What we want to do is we want to unpack it into four values and pass them as individual values to this function so that they can be recollected by args here. The other option is to remove the star so that you are passing a tuple directly to the multiply function and then removing this star so that the multiply function won't try to collect all its positional arguments 
into another tuple. However, I do like passing multiple different arguments, so I'm going to keep the stars there, but that's a choice for you to make. You can either pass arguments or you can pass a tuple. That is a very common problem and quite a difficult to diagnose problem as well. So I just wanted to go through it so that if you encounter that in the future, you'll know what's going on. Thanks for joining me in this video. I hope it's been useful and not too confusing. And I'll see you in the next one.